On Earth, we have a number of what we call impact craters on the surface. There's about 180 known craters on this planet. And they are formed when an asteroid or a comet collides with the surface of the Earth. Speeds are typically in the order of 15 to 20 kilometers per second for asteroids, and they can be up to 75 kilometers per second for comets. What we focused on as geologists over the last 20 years is essentially the forensics of impact. So we've gone to old, already formed craters on our planet, many of which are millions and millions of years old, and we've tried to reconstruct and work out what happened. And one of the things we're particularly interested in is what shock waves do to materials. So when that asteroid hits the surface, it generates a shock wave that moves fast, moves through the rocks really fast at supersonic speeds. And that shock wave interacts with the materials and transforms them. We can simulate some of those effects with the projectiles we launch at comparable speeds. And we can have targets, in some cases they can be rock targets, where we can try and recreate those effects that we see in natural craters. Some of those transformations make the material, interestingly enough, tougher than it was before it was hit. So you can generate new materials by shock, which can be advantageous as a protective material. If you think about that, that means we've acquired a knowledge and an expertise in an area that you can reverse engineer, if you like, and say, well, let's twist, let's turn that around and try and develop materials that instead of being more easily damaged and transformed by impact, can actually resist it. For space applications, you need very lightweight but ultra-strong materials, and we don't really have those. We have some materials, but we need to develop new ones. For vehicles on Earth, where you may have soldiers inside them, you want to try and protect a soldier. Another application is with commercial aircraft, an aircraft that we all fly in. Many of us fly in, uh, fly in on a regular basis. These aircraft have to comply with Federal Aviation Authority requirements in terms of strength and survivability if they're hit, for example, by a bird. The work we're doing with John is really right now research. We're trying to develop the analytical capability to predict the impact damage of birds on the aircraft structure, and then we're using his facility to experimentally verify the analytical predictions. The end result for us, us is to have uh, structures that are more efficient in terms of their ability to sustain damage and lighter weight. Right now we're at the end, the high pressure end, of what we call the light gas gun. We build up the pressure in this, and there's a valve here that bursts at a designated pressure value that we control. So this is the SABO, the clear plastic carrying device, and that sphere is the actual little projectile that will be launched at several kilometers per second, depending on how fast we want it to go. So in this chamber, the projectile is separated from the carrying device, the SABO. This splits into separate pieces and is kept within this chamber by a SABO catcher, leaving the projectile free to move through the laser trap into the target chamber. So we use the video, in this case, this particular application with the light gas launcher to monitor the speed and to check the speed of the projectile before it actually goes into the chamber and hits the target. The projectile comes through and we have commonly a series of plates to decelerate it. We have the actual first plate, which is the target plate, which is what we're interested in studying and investigating as a protective material. And then behind that, we have protective plates such that if the projectile penetrates it, then it is progressively decelerated and stopped. So I think having applications allows you to access the more industrial applied world. They invest in, in that knowledge and expertise to get something back from you. And from a student's perspective, there's then a channel way to go from academia into industry because many of my grad students have gone into industry afterwards because of the work they did as research students. The ultimate for me personally would be to design a protective system that saved the life of, of a soldier. But to me that would be an acid test of whether what we've done in transferring academic knowledge to applications really worked and that, that would be uh, very satisfying to have achieved something like that.